Hello, today's video topic is how to use the HTML custom visuals in Power BI. And we're going to be using the free visual, which is called HTML content. And you can get it from the App Source store. So if you click on this three dots in the selector over here and then get more visuals and just type in the word HTML, it'll pop up. So, all right, so it's this one that I'm using. Um, this one is also popular, it looks like, but this one advertises that it's a trial and the full version is paid. So I'm going to use the actually free one. And what you can do with these is you can, again, use your HTML and CSS to control your font. So you can set the line height. So you'll notice that the line height in this one is different from your average text box. So if I put some text in here. This is what the default is for text boxes. And you'll notice that this line height is quite a bit taller. Um, and there's currently no control for the line height on text boxes in Power BI. So you pretty much have to use um, HTML and CSS to set that yourself. And you can also use it to specify font weight very precisely. Uh, pretty much right now in Power BI, if you want to have a semi bold or a light font weight, you have to use this Segoe. Um, I don't even know if that's how you say it. It's like a UI font um, in order to get light or semi bold, and you can't even get semi bold in a text box right now. So, um, it's useful for that. And also for icons, SVG icons are dynamic, meaning you can resize them without the edges of your icons getting blurry, which is really nice. And you can also, if you download an entire icon pack, which you, there are free open source icon packs available, and I'll link one of those in the video description, the one that I'm using. You can use the file names on those as a filter, so you can really easily um, select from thousands of icons and then just filter it down and you've got your icon for your card or your text box or whatever you're using it in. And you can change the colors on these too, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So let's go through some of these. I'm going to put all of the code for this in the, I'm going to link it in the video description. I'll probably have to link to GitHub because it um, complains about the special characters sometimes on the code. But so if I select this one here and go into the HTML, um, basically what you do is you split um, you can either put your HTML and CSS into one measure and drop it in the values well here, here or you can separate out your CSS. And the reason that you'd want to do that is um, just like style sheets in um, web design. If you're referencing the same styles multiple times in different places, it makes sense to split it out so that if you want to make changes, you only have to update it in one place instead of updating it in line in 18 different places when you want to change something. So all I've got going on here is a variable that has my HTML code and I've got a double quotes and then my HTML. And um, this right here is the icon. So these are SVGs, which is basically like text that translates into an image. And you can control the size of these in here, or you can control them in CSS, or if you're dropping them into a visual, if you resize the visual, as long as you don't have an explicit height and width set, they auto size pretty well. And I'll show you that again in just a minute here. And the color, if you want to change the color, you just add a fill tag. So right after this view box tag here, you can just put fill equals and then a hex code. And if you need to easily copy the hex code out of your theme, you can just go to this view menu here in this drop down and customize the current theme. And that gives you the hex codes in here. And then for my return right here, I'm returning my CSS and web font measure to show you in just a second. And then I'm concatenating it with the space and my HTML code. And the space isn't necessary. I just added it in there because I thought I needed it at the time. But um, if we go over to our CSS and over here we have our CSS. So this is what we were linking to. And this has got all of our different styles in it. And normally you wouldn't need this many for a text box in Power BI, but I just happen to be um, trying to demonstrate all the different font weights. So I've got a zillion of them in here. And the paragraph line height is the attribute you're going to use to increase the line spacing. So one is normal, one and a half is kind of like a good middle ground, and two is like double spacing. 
And you can also, if you want all of your SVGs to be the same size, you can um, put your SVG tag in here and set a width or a height on it. Um, these icon SVGs are square, so I just set the width and the height is auto set. And down here I have, if you can see this, I'm probably in the way. Let me move off to the side. The um, font links here are just links to style sheets in Google Fonts. So. Um, this is what lets us use crazy web fonts and the, the web fonts are kind of a mixed bag. Um, I've got one here as a demonstration and the text says I would never use this in a BI report because it's barely readable. I'm just pointing out that you can, can use them if you want to. Um, these are kind of iffy because I noticed that when you select something in your slicer, it has a little bit of a lag before it loads and applies to the font style. So. <laughs> You see, it's like kind of jittery. That one is the one that is a web font. Um, so I probably wouldn't use web fonts in um, in an actual report unless one it's one that people aren't really often applying slicers to. And just a super duper quick overview of HTML. Um, what I've got going on here is these are the um, the paragraphs of text. I'm just calling the class that I named them in the CSS to apply the font weight. You could also put your styles in line here by just putting a style equals and then um, line height you know, 1.5, whatever. And that'll also work. I just have it separate for demonstration purposes. Okay, so let's go through how to do an SVG icon real quick. So there's a few different ways you can do this. If you're only using one or two icons, you can just create a measure that has your SVG text and nothing else in it and um, do one measure per icon. You can also load an entire folder full of SVG um, icons and then use that as one of your sources in Power Query. Um, that's what I've done here. So this one it has all of these choices and you can select something to filter it. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in Power Query in a little bit, um, but let's just add one as a measure. I'm gonna head on over to the Font Awesome website and I'll put a link to this in the video description also. So they've got, a, um, a database here that you can search that has um, thousands of icons. You can filter it on free to only show the free icons. And then just open the one you want and click on this copy SVG code. And the code for these, if you try and just paste it in verbatim, you run into some issues with the double quotes. So let me show you what I mean. If I just paste it in, um, the double quotes in the snippet are ending my text paste. So you can either add um, extra double quotes around your double quotes, or you can just replace your double quotes with single quotes, and that seems to work fine. So what I'm going to do, the fastest way to do that is to open up a text editor and just paste it in and do a edit replace, and then replace your double quotes with a single quote, replace all, and then copy that back out. Okay, so now we need to put some double quotes around this. So one goes here and then one goes at the end. And click OK. And this would be the time to add in a color if you want to add a color. So again, it would be after this view box here, you just put fill equals and then I'm just going to use blue for a particular reason. And now if we drop in our HTML content visual, then we're going to drag in our icon measure. You can click and drag these to resize as long as you don't have an explicit height and width set in the settings. And what I'm going to do with this is add a little bit of padding so that I don't have to add a second um, shape visual behind it to make a tile. So let's just go back in here and put in a div file equals and then do you want adding yes. And this is where you can add a border radius or a border if you want to also. That's what I did with this um, bike sold one down here. Again, the code for this is going to be linked in the video description if you want it. Close our div. That adds a little padding, which will shrink it down if we've got the sizing set. And then we can. I'm going to add a card visual now. I'm going to use the multi-row card because that will let you left align your text. And I'm just going to drag in, let's see, 
do I have a measure for this? I don't think I have a salesperson. I'm trying to find something that goes with the uh, um, people icon. So let me see. I got salesperson. I don't have an explicit measure for this. So I'm just going to do a distinct count. And I'm going to rename this to salespeople. And then I'm going to turn off the accent bar on the side and maybe make the out value a little bit bigger so that it stands out. You can set this to semi bold if you want to. I feel like that makes it look a little more interesting. And then if I drag this up here, I can kind of fiddle with the sizing until it's the right shape. We have a nice card to go with our icon. Um, so that's how to do that. And again, this one just has some extra CSS in it for a border top. Looks like. Looks like this. I've got a border radius and a border top that is black, and that's making this top here. Um, you can also do this with the shape visuals, except that um, then you have two visuals and it might increase the loading speed of your report. So, and the font awesome icons, which is um, this one, this cool one over here that you can filter, um, and you can download all of those from the Font Awesome website. They've got uh, the free version. Um, with this button here, and it'll just download a zip file that looks like this. And it's got a folder in it called SVGs and a license information. So if you open up this license information, it says you can virtually use this for whatever you want. So that's cool. I like that. I support that. And if we open up the SVGs folder, they've got three different kinds. And you can go in here and look at these if you want to. Um, you can connect to this in Power Query and expand them all out and then use that as a data flow if you want to. I'm not going to get into data flows today, but um, it's a cool idea to be able to put your icons in a data flow and then use them in all of your reports. Um, but here's how you connect to it in Power Query. And again, you can just, if you end up getting this working in Power Query, you can just paste it into the um, advanced editor code into a data flow and um, use it in multiple places. So we are going to go to new source and more. And we're going to choose either folder or SharePoint folder. So this report doesn't refresh. So I am I can just gonna use a folder on my computer. But um, usually if I'm pulling things from files, I'll put them in SharePoint and connect with the SharePoint folder. So let's connect and then browse and my Downloads folder right now. Just go with that and SVGs and click OK. OK again. And we're going to transform the combine here. Doesn't um, it doesn't work if you just click this to combine down because uh, I think it's because of the um, the way the files are structured. So we're going to do our own code to do that. I'm going to pull it out of one of my other queries here. So let me see. So I can copy and paste it. So it's this line right here. And I'm going to put it in ready to go. All right. So we're going to go to the advanced editor. And I'm going to put a comma after this first line. And then go down a row and paste. And then remove that trailing comma from the last line because you never have a comma in the last line before this um, in line. And then we're going to take the name of this step, which is this right here, and we're going to copy it and paste it over the word source here. So your last step is always the um, thing that goes under the in. And what this does is table.addColumn. So it's adding a new column to our table called SVG. And it is putting in there the text from the content of the files. So this is the SVG text that we use to render the icons. So that expanded out, and it is over here. Uh, if you want to, you can set a size now by doing a replace values and setting a, um, a size in here. Um, that'll make all of your icons the same size. If you don't do that, then you're able to resize it by just resizing the um, the HTML um, visual. So I'm going to remove the columns we don't need. So I'm going to select this one and select the name, which I want to keep, and do a remove other columns. And now I've got our SVGs. So if I close and apply this, And I've got about eight different versions of this because I 
had to take the <laughs> do this video a couple times. So let's see, we've got the, um, what do we call it, SVG demo. So I'm going to open this up and drag our SVG into the values here. And you'll see that it renders those and they resize and you can use the name fields to filter it. So I want to say this one or that's a lame one. Some of these are, but so now we've got an icon that we can easily add and you can, um, you could probably even use these dynamically um, in tables and that kind of thing if you wanted to. So not going to go into that today, but it's cool. I like it. I don't usually use icons in my reports right now because they're kind of a pain to track down, but I think I'm going to start using SVG icons because I think um, having a source of a whole bunch of different ones to choose from that um, scale very nicely is awesome. So it's neat. And by the way, I got the technique for this connecting to your SVG files from David Eldersfeld's blog. So he's got a post on how to do this, and I'll also link that in the video description if you need. Like 10 length at this point be cool but um he's awesome he's got some cool stuff on his site too so check that out and that is it for today so thank you for watching